Hey, it's Ralph. Welcome to a new tutorial on making a VR game. This time we are going to expand on what we did last time. Last time we added two hands, but they are of kind of spheres hands. And uh, we also added this kind of brick and we can pick it up. But I thought, why not make something even cooler? Why not make real hands uh, that look really nice and have some animation if you grab and that is what we are going to do today and let's get started so the first thing now we would do is to go into our 3d modeling program and model these hands then we would have to rig them so we can finally animate them but thankfully oculus does provide free hand models for you to download them they are under the creative commons license which means you can use them in your game as long as you attribute oculus for the authorship and this is what we're going to do obviously and the other thing is the models are maya files which means if you don't have a maya license on your computer you can't import them into unity so what i did is i converted them to an fbx file which you can find in the github repository so after you download the left and right hand fbx files or maya files you drag them into your project view then we select our left hand and we drop it onto our left hand we have created before we will now rename it and it's now a gyro object and we name it, rename it to left hand skin mesh and also for right hand we also take the left hand model and drag it onto our right hand now we rename it to right hand skin mesh and the reason we use the left hand is so later we only have to animate the left hand and can use uh, that animation for both hands but now you do notice that the scale is not right. The hands are really tiny and the reason for that is if you select the root object, you will see our scale was set to 0 0.1 and that is obviously not right anymore. We don't want that. We will delete our uh, giant sphere. So we select both of these and we change the scale to 1, 1, 1. And now the sphere is really big and it's actually one meter in diameter so we don't need it anymore and we're going to delete it so we select both of the parents and uh, we delete the mesh renderer and the mesh filter so now our hands are visible and they're on the right scale but we also want our left hand to be our right hand so we have to flip it horizontally so we go and select that and change the scale to minus one be sure to not select the root, uh, but to select the child object we have dragged in. And now if we start the project, um, if we play it, uh, we will see our hands are showing up in the approximate right positions, but not entirely. And the reason for that is we need to adjust uh, the positions uh, manually. And that is what we're going to do next. So the next step we are going to do is a bit tricky to do, but first we are going to disable our left hand, or you could also do it with the right hand, um, so it doesn't distract us while we adjust them. And we also go into game view and disable maximize on play. So the next thing I am going to do is hit on play, put on my headset and in the right hand I do have my controller and the left hand I will use with my mouse to adjust uh, the editor settings, meaning the rotation. Also make sure that you have selected the right uh, object uh, in the hierarchy, which is um, not the parent, but the uh, right hand uh, skinned mesh of game object. And then I will just adjust the values and what I actually do is I peek through the tiny gap at my nose and I look if the mesh and my hand uh, are aligned and this is a bit tricky to do. Thankfully with the Oculus Rift it's a bit easier because you do have that tiny nose gap. I think with a Vive or a mixed reality headset it's probably a bit difficult. If you do have an Oculus Rift or a touch controller, you can look at my values now. You can, can just copy them. And after we have found our values, we have to also uh, not hit uh, the play uh, before we copy our values again. 
So uh, we need to save those values. So we click on the tiny gear at the top right of the transform and we select copy component. Then we end our play mode and after that we just take these copied values and we click on our gear again and we click on paste component values. So they are now uh, applied to our hand. And you can see now this is the offset that is rightly aligned to our hands. And then we go into our left hand, we do enable it again and we copy also uh, our values into our left hand. The problem now though is we also need to do our x-axis scaling again. The hand needs to be flipped again. So we need to go to the left hand and type in one because it is the right scale. And after you have done that, it looks still kind of weird because we need to also mirror our z-axis. So instead of minus 96 degrees, we need to make it plus 96 degrees. And after that, if you look at the hands, they are now perfectly mirrored to each other and all the values should be right if we now start our project. Both of our hands should now feel right in the, the right position. So the next step would be to animate our hands. We do want to have a grab animation and if you select the skinned mesh and you see on the right, Interestingly, there is an animator object uh, component attached to it and this is what Unity internally uses to animate. If you don't see that, you can also select the left hand mesh and go under rig and animation type. You need to make sure that there is a generic type selected and this will then import the rig from the FBX file and which will then enable us to animate the hands. So now we can select our left hand skinned mesh object. And if we click on the arrows to see its hierarchy, we see there's a lot of sub objects. And these are the bones we can then use uh, to animate the fingers. So you have a middle finger, pinky ring and thumb. And these are also containing uh, all sub objects. So if we now go into our scene view, uh, we take a closer look where these bones are located. Um, so if we, for example, select our thumb, uh, we see there's these sub uh, bones, which are all the knuckles uh, of our hands. And these we can now animate in terms of rotation. So first we are going to deselect our floor so we can make our animation process a bit easier and see all uh, the important parts of our hand. Okay, so the next step is we need to create an animation controller. So we click on our project window, right click and select create animation controller and we name it hand animation controller. And what it does is it controls our animations like it says we need to define what are the animations and how we transition from them. So we not just now need to create it only, we also need to assign it to our animator component with our skinned meshes. So we only drag it uh, into our animator controller. So now the slot of the controller has uh, the animation controller assigned to it. We need to make sure that we do that for both hands. And now if you click on the animation controller, you will see a new window popping up. It's the animator. And here we can define all of our animations and the transitions between them. So the next step is actually creating the animations. We do need two animations. One is an idle animation and the other is a grabbing animation. So what we do first is we go into window. So first what we are going to do is go into window and then animation. And this will open up the keyframe animation editor where we can then select our skin mesh. Um, I'm going to dock my animation window into the bottom. So it's easy for me to animate. And to create a new animation, we select our skin mesh and we click on create and Unity will prompt us for a name. 
and we are going to start with the simplest animation of all which is an idle animation and I'm just going to call it that. But before we are going to animate our hands we gonna make some folders in our project view to make it a bit more organized. We just need to right click on uh, it and do a create folder and we create folders for the animations, the script and for the materials and we just drop in all of these objects so it looks a bit nicer and we will find stuff much faster. So now if we go back into our animator window we will see that there is a new item which is our idle animation we created and it will start from the entry which means as soon as the animator controller starts it will transition into an idle animation we have created. So now with our left hand skinned mesh object selected we go in the animation editor under add property, hand world and transform and we add a keyframe for the position by clicking on the plus sign. And that is already it, we have our idle animation. If we click on play, nothing happens, but that is exactly what we want for the idle animation. We are going to now start uh, animating our left hand. And for that, I am disabling the right hand so they do not distract us. And first of all, you need to select the left hand mesh and we need to also look into what we want to animate we want to start with the thumb and the thumb has uh, three knuckles uh, if you look at it there's thumb one we start with that one and if we on the right we try to uh, change the rotation values you will see the rotation of the thumb will also change now we are going to create our grab animation and for that we click on the bottom left and we're going to create a new clip and we're going to call it grab animation and this time uh, we also want to animate uh, the thing uh, compared to our idle animation. Also make sure that you have the grab animation selected. And then we need to go again into add property, select our thumb one transform and in the thumb one transform we need to add the rotation. Then we go to the last keyframe and in the last keyframe we can now click on the record button and that will record our transform manipulations and we go to the C axis and we manipulate the thumb a bit down so this will now animate our thumb from the beginning to the end and if we stop the recording we can now look at our animation. Now for the rest of the fingers you just need to make sure that you are on the last keyframe and you have the record button enabled and then you just uh, manipulate the rotation usually it's the C rotation of the fingers to a, a closed hand and after you have done that for all the fingers and all the um, index finger and the knuckles and then you should have a closed hand at the end. So after we have created our grab animation we go back into our animator and in there we need to now create a transition from any state basically into our grab animation and for that we click on the any state and we see also we have our grab animation also already in there but we click on the any state and click on make transition and we assign it to our grab animation and now we also need to define the condition under which this transition happens and the condition we are going to go to parameters and we add a new uh, parameter and it's a bool variable and that will be true or false and we are going to call this is grabbing and if the user is grabbing from any state we will transition into the grab animation but we also need to select the uh, transition arrow and under conditions we need to click the plus and is grabbing 
and there already it's uh, right uh, we need to say that if the is grabbing is true we transition into the hand closed animation we also need to select our created animation in the project window and make sure that it is not looping so we disable the loop time check and that will make sure that there's no loops happening at all Next, we need to make sure that the transition is fast. So we select the transition in the animator and under settings, we go and make the transition duration to 0.05 and we make sure that has exit time has no check mark because we don't wanna have any uh, delay between pressing and the animation triggering. Now we need to also create a transition when we are in the grab state back to the idle state. So we click right on it and make a new transition. We select that transition and we need to now again uh, make sure that it has no exit time and the duration is fast enough so uh, it is not slow and any delays happening. Under conditions we also need to define the exact condition when the is grabbing variable is false, we will transition back into the idle state. Finally, we need to set the animation speed of the grab animation to 10. And that is because otherwise it will feel weird if your hands close not fast enough. And as the final steps, now we are going to add a hand grabbing script. This is a tiny script you can find also on GitHub. Um, it will make sure that the is grabbing bool variable will set to true as soon as the hand grabbing is closed. So we select both of the uh, hands, uh, parent objects, uh, the same basically object as the hand grabbing script is on. And we take our hand uh, animation script and we drag it onto both of them. Finally, I also updated the hand grabbing script from the last times. There's now a new variable you need to assign for each hand. It's called other hand reference and it is a reference to the other hand. So from the left hand needs a reference to the right hand and the right hand needs a reference to the left hand. Essentially, it needs to know that the other hand is currently grabbing or is not grabbing so it doesn't get confused and you can find the updated script also in the GitHub repository and you can check out how that works. It's all commented out code and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'm happy to answer them. I'm also developing a VR game where I'm documenting all my progress. There will be a new video probably this or next week and you can also check that out. I'm always happy to answer your questions and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you and if you want to see more in the future you can also subscribe and see you next time. Bye bye.